The next Bioware title should take notes from Mass Effect 2 instead of Anthem. I'm sure you've all heard the news that Bioware will be taking lessons from Anthem and applying them to their next Dragon Age and Mass Effect titles. I was there when they discussed it at PAX. All I can say is, don't worry. It was taken a bit out of context. However, if they were to learn from any game, they should be learning from their best, Mass Effect 2. During this video, I'll be giving examples why Mass Effect 2 offers the biggest educational bounty when moving forward in a single-player, narrative-driven game. So, let's begin. In Mass Effect 2, you start off with a bang, literally. To explain how you could change class or looks from Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 2, the devs creatively made your character, well, die. Murdered by an unknown enemy. Your whole crew was put in danger and scattered throughout space without you to hold them together. Before the game even kicks in, you as a player are already emotionally invested in kicking the asses of the antagonist. So from the start, you don't just have a ticket to the intergalactic beatdown, you want to be sent to stage. They killed you! The narrative created simply from suffocating to death in the cold void of space and your frozen body falling into the atmosphere of a nearby planet is a powerful one. You want to know who did it and you want to find them. You want to get revenge and if you played Mass Effect 1, you want to find your friends and see if they're okay. Mass Effect 2 captures this perfectly. Bioware games are extremely narrative driven. For the average gamer used to the quick gratification of mobile culture with its exploding loot boxes and non-stop action, it can be quite boring and slow. For us, the ones with more patience and desire to discover a wonderful storyline and powerful characters, we find a rewarding experience in Bioware. Even though the start of Dragon Age Origins can be quite nail-biting and the start of Mass Effect 3 had some emotion, Mass Effect 2's opening act truly nailed the emotional investment. The average gamer enjoyed Mass Effect 2 regardless of its narrative-driven pace. A lot of that is to do with how invested they felt from the opening act. The opening would be nothing if it was only supported by a terribly paced mess of a game. Thankfully, Mass Effect 2 had nailed that as well. The universe wasn't relying on you to save it like in 3. You weren't hot on someone's trail like in 1. No, in 2, you are preparing for a mission. A suicide mission. You have time to get it right because you know you won't have a second chance. Therefore, you don't feel as guilty doing side missions, exploring, or helping your squad out like you do in 1 or 3. You had choice. However, engaging missions were not few and far between. It felt like everything you did, everywhere you went, something critical would come up. You enter Omega, you recruit the universe's most handsome Solarian scientist. You find an old friend, you make some new ones, you even make your engineers calibrating processes much easier and get your ship's medical officers smashed. And that's just the first hub within the first few hours of the game. You can come back here later for more fun. If you want, you can jump straight to the final mission almost at the start of the game. You'll probably fail, killing all of your squad and yourself, but you can try. You aren't limited, but you aren't overwhelmed. The whole time you don't feel overwhelmed with what you can do, nor do you feel the universe is empty, which I feel Dragon Age Inquisition didn't get quite right. If it's your first time playing Mass Effect, you probably notice a magnitude of interesting aliens, locations and more. The game doesn't over-explain them to you. You're required to dig deeper into the beautifully narrated codexes if you want to know more. I remember spending hours exploring the galaxy just to read about each individual planet and what made it unique. I gushed about it to my friends even through their blank, uninterested faces. My social awareness radar was going off, they aren't interested Dan, but it didn't matter. I was so invested in the lore, I bought the game for them just so they could experience it with me. I was a step out of reality. The game though, doesn't shy away from reality. Humans are a young race, wanting more than they deserve. We discover space travel and the first thing we do is start a war. Sounds about right. The developers were brave, making the world full of racism, violence, poverty, sexism and more. By doing this, the game isn't holding our hand and acting like it needs to protect us from the truth. The devs knew the universe isn't one big sunshine rainbow participation trophy. It presents reality dark and gritty so we can rise up to challenge it. We can fight it. If you struggled with bullying throughout your life, you can stand up to it in Mass Effect 2. Or you can punch a woman in the face, not because she's a woman, but because she makes disingenuous assertions. Equality means everyone is open game, and Mass Effect succeeds in that. And succeeds in immersing you in a universe that feels real. 
Someone offending you? Toughen up and do something about it. Example, if you take a drink at Omega, a Batarian will poison you. A lot of Batarians hate or mistrust humans in the universe. You can be a Paragon, let it go, walk away, or you can call him out to the crowd, or you can even force him to drink his own poison. Drink it. You can deal with his bigotry head on. It doesn't hide the dirty from the player, it lets them overcome it within their own narrative. There are a lot of lessons the next Mass Effect or even Dragon Age can learn from Mass Effect 2. We talked about building emotional investment, pacing, choice and brevity in storytelling, but we haven't talked about the climax. Everyone appreciates a good climax and some people only play games for it. In Dragon Age 1 you save Ferelden, in Dragon Age 2 you save Kirkwall, in Dragon Age Inquisition you save the world, in Mass Effect 1 you save the universe and in Mass Effect 3 you save the universe again, but for real this time. In Mass Effect 2 you save human fringe colonies from the slave race of the big bad evil dudes. It's arguable that the ultimate result, the stakes, were smaller in Mass Effect 2 than in the other Bioware titles, so why then did it have the best, most powerful and toe-curling climax? Because the game was centred around it more so than other titles. Like I mentioned before, you can try to achieve the climax from the beginning of the game, but without preparing, you have little hope of getting a good ending. If you don't prepare, or you don't make the right choices, members of your squad, characters that you have an emotional attachment with, can die. Not video game die where they can be resurrected, killed, for good. They don't appear in Mass Effect 3, and they have a plaque on the memorial on your ship. They're, they're dead, alright? So, more than Mass Effect 3, you can see the results of your choices in Mass Effect 2. Your success and your failures are experienced because there's another game right after. Being the middle of the pack, Mass Effect 2 had you living the choices you made in 1 and seeing the results of your choices in 3. It was the perfect mesh. Along with your teammates potentially being killed off, your character can be killed as part of the story, resulting in a game over. So just like the opening act, this thought of climax gave you the invested interest in the game. You wanted to make sure you had the best odds of surviving the suicide mission. You wanted to go out and fully upgrade your ship to tackle the potential trials ahead. You wanted to build up your team and meet new allies. You wanted to get their loyalty and deck them out with awesome gear. You wanted to get to high level and be powerful enough to get through what you're told from the very start is going to be the most difficult challenge you've faced yet. And mechanically, it might not have been the hardest thing you've ever played, but if you put yourself in the role of Shepard, it most definitely would have been the most difficult mission he had ever experienced. You really feel that throughout the mission. The first time you play Mass Effect 3 through to the climax, you might have lost some squad members. This incentivizes you to play again, taking different choices and using a different class, and you'll find that you experience the game in a completely different way. Bioware nerds will also know that achievements in Mass Effect 1 translated over to 2 in the form of rewards. Bank 1 million credits in Mass Effect 1 for example and you start with a credit boost in 2. So achievement hunters in 1 would feel the fruits of their labour in 2. Achievement hunters would also be encouraged to get all they can in 2 because there was potential for the same kind of rewards in 3. Although it wasn't nearly the same, it was reason to achieve more. So players will want revenge from the opening act and develop a drive to see the game through to conclusion. When we finish, there is an incentive to play through again. Mechanics and narratives that I don't think were fully intended came together to yield a wonderful combination in Mass Effect 2, something that had not been repeated quite the same way by Bioware since. So if Bioware want to take a lesson from anything, it shouldn't be Anthem and how its hub world gives narrative. It should be Mass Effect 2, their most powerful game yet. Anthem already has missed the mark in my opinion. We don't have a compelling reason to, to play it and see it through besides getting loot and playing with friends. And frankly, that's not what the Bioware experience is about. Give us a reason to care right from the start of the game. Give us a reason to press forward throughout the game in a well-paced manner and give us powerful choice-driven climaxes with consequences and rewards. Give us such an experience that we want to play through it again to see a different narrative. But ultimately, give us back the Bioware we love. It's like we're standing by a dying relative's bed and we're hoping they wake up so we don't have to pull the plug.
Thanks for watching guys. I had a lot of fun making this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe and click that little bell below. And if you haven't already, be sure to join my Discord. It's full of fantastic like-minded individuals and you get to talk to me directly as well.